Hi everyone, this is Trevor Jones from astrobackyard.com and I wanna help you choose your first telescope. I know we're com coming into the Christmas season and a lot of you will be looking to buy your first telescope and you know very little about astronomy going into it. I was there once. It was over 10 years ago now that I bought my first telescope and it led me to where I am today where astronomy really is my life and astrophotography. So I, I think I can help you out in making a smart choice at this very important stage of nurturing your love for the night sky. There's a lot of telescope choices out there and it can be a tough decision. And I think it's important that you buy something that's going to nurture and progress your interest in the hobby of astronomy and stargazing and actually be a positive experience so that you stick with it and it grows from there. So you've probably noticed this telescope sitting behind me here and it's not this specific telescope that is important, it's the type of telescope. So this is a tabletop Dobsonian reflector. Now a Dobsonian reflector telescope works with a mirror at the base that reflects the image into the secondary mirror and into the eyepiece. So this is where you view the objects and it's literally point and shoot. So you point it to where you want to go and fully manual process. There are computerized telescopes that you can get that you actually punch in the object on a keypad that you want to see and it will automatically slew to it for you. First of all, those are more expensive. Second of all, I really think it's important, especially early on, to actually have a manual telescope that you can find objects yourself in the night sky. Use a star chart or a stargazing app on your phone and actually learn where objects are in the night sky and, and find them. Uh, it's a lot of fun and I think it's a valuable experience early on. I also think it's important that you don't break the bank on your first telescope. Uh, I put my first telescope on my credit card. I think it was about $300. It was all I could afford. It was above my budget, obviously, at the time. To get something that's really expensive before you even know how to use it is never a smart idea. So something reasonably priced that's manageable uh, is probably the best idea. So again, that's why I'm leaning towards these tabletop Dobsonians. So when it comes to telescopes, there's magnification and aperture. There's a lot of new terms to learn. Uh, what a lot of people get wrong is thinking that a high magnification is a really good thing when really it doesn't matter if it has a high magnification using an eyepiece, if it doesn't have enough light gathering power to produce a nice image at the eyepiece. So the larger the aperture, the more light the telescope can soak in and the better view you're gonna get through the eyepiece. That's where these Dobsonians really excel. So there's a lot of these smaller refractor telescopes that you've seen, kind of that traditional looking telescope, 70 millimeters, 60 millimeters, those really long refractors you see on the tripod base. Those can be good, although I really think that a Dobsonian reflector for visual use early on as your first scope is probably a better choice. You're gonna get better views through a telescope like this. So there's larger ones that actually stand on the ground. You get that larger mirror. An eight inch is a popular choice, but you can get 10, 12, 16, and go on from there. And obviously, as that mirror gets bigger, you're getting better, better views. You can see dimmer objects in space, so the appeal is there. It's called aperture fever to just keep wanting a larger telescope to see deeper and deeper. You can really get carried away. I think the important thing to remember is too, if it gets too heavy and too big, you probably will be less motivated to use it, especially on a cold night in the dark. Whereas something like this, this is actually a collapsible one, so it's really compact in size, and there's no excuse not to really bring it outside on any clear night and have a look at the moon or something. So many of you know that I'm actually an astrophotographer first and a visual astronomer second. So can you take pictures through a telescope like this? The answer is yes, but it really wasn't meant for that. So something I hear often early on when I'm speaking to someone that's just met me and I explain what I do, and they're asking, okay, well, which telescope should I buy as my first telescope? And I recommend something like this, a modest tabletop Dobsonian reflector and they say, okay, well, is that what you use to take your pictures? And I say, well, no, I, I use these refractors that are not affordable at all and they take great pictures, but the visual views aren't anywhere near what you can get with this. So I think you should start with visual astronomy before you get into astrophotography because the cost goes up, the complexity goes way up, and it really is a long process. There's no instant gratification when it comes to astrophotography. You really need to start here and work your way up. That's the way I started anyway, and uh, it got me to where I am today, so it's kind of the way I recommend. 
So these types of telescopes, they'll usually come in a package, include a few eyepieces. This one has a 10 millimeter eyepiece and a 25 millimeter eyepiece. Usually they're nothing to write home about, the eyepieces that come with it, but with that standard inch and a quarter size or sometimes a two inch focuser, you can actually get by third party eyepieces from all these other companies, some really nice glass to really upgrade your experience there. But the eyepieces that come with it are usually good enough to get started. So taking pictures through this telescope, you definitely can take pictures of the moon, solar system objects, the really bright stuff, Jupiter, Saturn, by simply holding your camera phone up to the eyepiece. You'll have to align the camera with it, and it's a bit finicky and it can be a little frustrating, um, but if you get the settings right, the exposure settings right, you can actually take some pretty impressive pictures of the moon and Saturn and Jupiter, and even Mars this year, how big it is. So no deep sky objects because you really need the tracking for that. So the, an astrophotography rig is on a tracking equatorial mount that compensates for the apparent rotation of the night sky, whereas this is just stationary. At high magnification, you look at Jupiter, it's flying past the eyepiece. And luckily with a design like this, you can follow it with your eyes slowly and just keep, keep it in your crosshairs. Photography is very limited with a scope like this, but you can definitely get your feet wet and that's where I started. I took my first pictures of Saturn and uh, even Pleiades um, and then of course the moon. High, you know, really high magnification pictures of the moon. Really, really cool pictures through a stationary Dobsonian telescope like this. The last point that I wanted to make is that you should probably buy your telescope from an actual astronomy retailer. Uh, as tempting as Amazon is with that next day shipping, and trust me, I, I get a lot of stuff on Amazon and I love it, but a telescope, if you buy it on Amazon, you're pretty much on your own after you get it. So whereas these dedicated astronomy retailers, uh, they, they're knowledgeable about the stuff that they sell. So they'll support you after you buy it if you don't know how to use it. They'll have extra parts, they'll replace things, and the warranty's better, so you're way better off buying from a reputable astronomy retailer than on Amazon when it comes to telescopes. So not everybody thinks of that, right? They just say, well, I can get it on Amazon, it'll be here tomorrow. But then you're just kind of on your own. So uh, I would take the time to research the reputable dealers wherever you are and to buy from them because they'll really support you. You can go in and chat with them and everything. It's really handy, especially when you're diving into something like astronomy and telescopes. It can be overwhelming at first. So the key takeaways to remember, a tabletop Dobsonian telescope in whatever size you can afford is a great choice. Start with visual astronomy. It will come with eyepieces. You can get your feet wet with astrophotography using your smartphone at the eyepiece and learn the night sky through this manual experience. Even if you do upgrade to say a full on astrophotography rig later on as I have, something like this is still handy to have. You wanna take a look at the moon on a spur of the moment night, it's right there for you and you're gonna get that great visual experience. You can share it with friends. Uh, if you're, this is for your child, this is what you want. This is gonna provide that important nurturing experience early on so they fall in love with astronomy as I have. So I'm really passionate about taking this road as your first telescope and I really hope that this video has helped you make your decision easier and until next time, clear skies.